Today I want to talk about my 1983 Laverta RGS 1000. As I mentioned in my video on the Joda, Laverta began its triple in 1973 and it lasted well right through the end of the 80s, still winning races and uh, making itself a legend. But by the 80s people were less forgiving of things like vibration. And Laverta decided to make a major change in the motor. So instead of a 180 crank that's been on all the previous triples, meaning that the outside two pistons rise and fall together while the middle piston is 180 degrees opposed to it, they went with the 120 crank, which means the left cylinder might be at top dead center while the right cylinder is at bottom dead center and the middle cylinder is halfway between. That's like every other triple that's ever been made. Nobody else has ever copied the 180 arrangement. That has the effect of smoothing out some of the vibration, but there's still one, uh, it's called a rocking couple. Anyways, to deal with that, they came up with their own kind of rubber mounting system. Uh, similar to Norton's Isoelastic, you can see the big uh, rubbers in there. Uh, that's with the engine mount except it doesn't incorporate the frame and they did a lot of styling changes as well um, you can see that it's got many of the same Italian parts that we noted before there's Brembo rear brake and caliper these are drilled uh, Laverta's own mag wheels uh, this is the first version of them and Brembo's on the front Marzacci forks uh, it should have Marzacci shocks, but I've got those in a box and I put icons on them because I like icons. But there's a lot of unique bits too uh, that, that they've changed with the engine. For example, on the Joda, the alternator and ignition is out in this uh, part of the cover. For this model, they changed that so there's a, a uprated alternator in there and the ignition is now over here. You can see when you look at the engines that there's a difference. And it's made the engine a little narrower, giving more ground clearance on the right-hand side. They also did this with the foot pegs. So you see that screw and that nut down there. If you loosen those, that whole foot peg rotates in a circle. So you can put the foot pegs up or down or further to the front or further to the back. And it all just kind of works together. Uh, that's on both sides, of course. Then there's this uh, plastic material here. They created their own. It's called Bayflex. So it's, it's very flexible. The color is baked right into it, so it never fades. This is all original from 1983, and just look at the quality of that. It's, it's like brand new. Now on the fairing, I've got these extra hand bits to protect uh, the wind uh, from your, your hands. It makes the fairing a little bit wider. But uh, they had a model called the Executive, which also came with suitcases that clipped onto the back here. This isn't an Executive, that was a different model, but they're very similar, so uh, this one has just the hand bits. And you can see the dash is much more automotive. I Someone was telling me it's from a Fiat. I don't know which model, though. And I've put the hand warmers on there, that's why the Oxford thing. It also has a hydraulic clutch, which was a first for Laverta. Uh, they had a reputation for having a very heavy clutch. I don't think this hydraulic clutch improved it at all. And one of the most interesting things about this bike is if you look at the gas tank, there is no gas cap. And I have fun at shows asking people to try to locate it. and They think it's going to be in the seat. Actually, that rear seat cowl comes off, and then it's a dual seat for a passenger. This is where the gas cap is. It's actually in the fairing, so if you reach here, just like your automobile, there's a lockable cap in there. And there's a tube, a big steel tube that's welded right into the tank that goes underneath here. And that there is the vent for the gas tank. So that's pretty interesting. Nobody else ever did that. They made about 2,500 of these bikes. Uh, so they're not, you don't see a lot of them, although I know where there's another one. They're fun to ride in that they're very fast. Uh, they're geared high. Uh, first gear is high. Uh, fifth gear is high. When you're on the highway, before you know it, you're doing 
85, 90 miles an hour. So they're just not legal around here. I guess they were really good in Europe for, you know, the Autobahn and so forth. But for a Canadian rider, they're just playing too fast. They want to be going at 85, 90 miles an hour. So often I'm riding in fourth gear, but that just doesn't feel right either. Um, it's a tough bike to ride through town because it's tall and heavy. But if you get it out onto a road where you can let it, let it loosen its legs, it's like an all-day rider. That seat is super comfortable. The riding position is comfortable. The wind is off of you with that fairing. And it just wants to go. Uh, sweepers. It, it does everything well. And with a passenger on, you don't even notice there's a passenger on. I guess that's about all I want to say at the moment about the RGS. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Learned something new. Thanks for... Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.